Support WrestleTalk! Give us a subscribe. Well, not everything can be the winged eagle, can it? In the kayfabe world of wrestling, the achievement of a big gold cummerbund is everything. As wise man Kevin Owens once said, I fight for a prize. That is the prize. That means more money. That means a better life. And the championship should reflect that in its design. The NXT UK Championship, gorgeous. The big gold belt, historic. The gift of the gods championship, wonderfully Mortal Kombat stupid. A good title belt represents an athlete at the peak of their career, the envy of their colleagues, and someone whose trousers are definitely not going to fall down, which is the highest mark of nobility in the land. Some of these belts, however, resemble more of a dunce's cap than a symbol of achievement. Some wrestlers should be fighting to not wear them, and some represent the most shocking sartorial snafu sighted in a squared circle. These are the 11 worst wrestling championship belts ever. Number 11, the NWA made some terrible belts, you guys. The National the Wrestling Alliance was founded over 70 years ago and was once the dominant brand in the wrestling industry. However, being over 70 doesn't always mean you're great, as proven by your crap granddad. Tell me another story about old coins, idiot. And some of the designs the NWA have dribbled out over the decades wouldn't be good enough for Blind Ham Johnson's shack of antiquital bullshit. Cases in point, Luthez's tiny NWA World Heavyweight title belt it looked like he made out of some old coins your crap granddad would tell you about. This version of the NWA Junior a heavyweight belt that looks like it'll have your f***ing appendix out if you're bent to tie your shoelaces. And honestly, come at me all you want, but the famous NWA World Heavyweight Championship, the Ric Flair Harley Race belt, one of the most important bits of hardware in the history of rough and tumble, it's bad, guys. It's squat. The colours on the flags really clash. It looks cheap. The US flag being off to one side gives it a distracting asymmetry. And also, you won't be able to unsee this, I'm sorry, it looks like a face with big derpy eyes and a big clown nose. Not since Mick Jagger has something so ugly meant so much to so many. Number 10, jam that jam. Like the NWA heavyweight belt, the Universal Championship is proof that we can get used to anything if it sticks around long enough. By the way, for those wondering, jam that jam is a reference to a tattoo that Hulk Hogan has on his forearm that says, I am that I am, but it actually looks like it says, jam that jam. Anyway, yes, the big red sticky mess that is the Universal title belt. A design so horrible, it ruined an entire SummerSlam. And you know what? Yes, it's terrible. Yes, it looks infected. And yes, it looks more like someone carrying around a skinned animal carcass in a championship. But all of WWE's top belts are homogenous shambles right now. Raw Women's, SmackDown Women's, WWE, Blue Universal. They're all the same fucking belt. And it's just an ugly corporate logo on a strap. Yes, we're all used to the WWE Championship design by now. But we must never forget that WWE Championships used to look like this and not a gift shop key ring. Number nine, Penny for your tag belts. For some reason, the wrestling industry has found it really hard to get tag championships right. The WCW Cruiserweight Tag Belts Eagle design made them look like something a Boy Scout would be embarrassed to wear. The current WWE Women's Tag Belts look like hubcaps for a rich kid's tricycle. And even New Japan Pro Wrestling, who otherwise makes some of the most beautiful belts in existence, knocked out a pair of junior heavyweight tag belts that are so small and flimsy. It looks like some of the champions picked up at the merch stand before the show. And then we come to the WWE Tag Belts the smashed pennies. Like you've come in joint third at the Caesars Palace fancy dress competition for Roman perverts. Ugly brown manhole covers made even worse by this god-awful branded red and branded blue strap phase that WWE insists on going through. The raw belts look like someone's pierced a pair of giant dog's tongues, and the SmackDown ones look like someone's sewn pocket change onto a moldy sock. WWE, keep the Intercontinental and US titles and send the rest of your main roster titles back to the shop. You were ripped off, pal. Number eight, look at my belt belts. It's legitimately not fair to rag on indie promotions belts. They do not have the resources that major companies do, although look at these sweet Christ. But it feels a little less harsh to go after Dojo Pro, seeing as it's a show on Amazon Prime and made in association with Ring of Honor. The concept is actually quite fun. Every episode is one match as part of a winner stays on style gauntlet. Two men fight with the winner carrying a white belt into the next episode as someone new steps up to try and take it from him with the winner of the whole gauntlet getting a black belt. Belt. Pretty cool. Except the belts look like this. Oh no, it's a belt belt and it's a big yikes, especially when people insist on carrying it over their shoulder. Like, I get it. It was a new format and they tried something new and that's to be praised. You should check out the show itself, but the belts are bad and everyone involved should feel bad. Number seven, concrete jungle where belts are made bad. We all like Tommy Dreamer, even though he has a slightly disconcerting vibe of will do anything to get on TV. He's like Tom Green got old. Wait a minute checks notes. 
He's like Tom Green. He's a cuddly glutton for punishment whose peak in WWE was winning this way too big silver slab of an ECW championship. A lot of people rag on the WWE ECW title design, but it's a Michelangelo compared to another piece of hardware Tommy once strutted around. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the New York Hardcore title and check, please. In 2002, the WWE Hardcore title belt was literally falling apart. Sure, it was always part of the joke of the Hardcore title that it looked like literal trash, but it was actually wrong. So WWE briefly extended its life by slapping the belt on Bradshaw and renaming it the Texas Hardcore title, replete with a brand new belt with clip art Texan flag plate on the front. It looks like the magic art to the US title's Gyarados. When Tommy Dreamer won the belt later that year, they gave us this, which is literally the old retired WWF European Championship belt with a New York license plate glued to the front, complete with a gift shop Lady Liberty holding a Singapore cane. What better way of WWE thanking its spiritual home territory than this, which wouldn't even be the top prize at your dad's fight club. Fun fact, this awful version of the belt was the last iteration of the hardcore title before it was retired on Raw by Rob Van Dam in a unification match. Number six, rated ass. Look, it spins, you know for kids. So let's talk about spinner belts and the grown white men who've carried them. Easily the worst thing John Cena ever did was introduce a phase of toy titles to the WWE. The most famous is the Vajazzle WWE Championship that ran for an unforgivable eight years. It span, it was covered in more tacky gems than your mother's wedding dress, and worst of all, instead of saying champion, it said champ. How humiliating. TNA once fired shots at WWE by taking a replica of the spinner belt, sticking a beer bottle to the front and giving it to James Storm as the TNA beer drinking championship, Savage Gardens. However, the WWE championship is not the worst spinner belt WWE created. It looked important, at least, and we got used to it over time. The US title was a lot worse. It would have been laughed out at the Vanilla Ice Middle School Craft Fair. Then there's this, the rated R spinner belt, the worst of a bad bunch. Look at my terrible belt, said John Cena. Hold my moose head, says Edge. How do you make the spinner belt worse? By adding an ugly clashing middle panel that looks like a rub-on tattoo that comes free with a terrible skateboard magazine. Thank God it only lasted a month. Number five, okay boomer. If you ask me, and I'm well aware that you haven't, no one should, the most beautiful belt in WWE right now is the NXT North American Championship. Rich colored leather strap, geographical rather than corporate decoration. It's a design with a classic feel. However, it does look very similar to one of the worst worst belts ever worn in the company, and this one's classic in all the wrong ways. The briefly used first ever iteration of the then called WWWF Championship, look at it, oh f it's Lisa's Florida costume, but a belt. Where do we start? The wrestling figures that look like they're kissing on the side plates, the wonky eagle, the fact that if you bend down, Maine will have your large intestines out. Bruno Sammartino beat Buddy Rogers in Madison Square Garden in 1963 to win this. This is the first ever iteration of what we now call the WWE Championship. They hastily replaced it with this design, which is better, but you'll never forget your first, no matter how much you want to. Number four, I gotta do me. Personalized championships. Sometimes you get a smoking skull belt, which is great. Sometimes you get the Brahma bull belt and nothing says badass like electric moo moos. Sometimes you get the fiends look at my face belt, which looks sort of half decent in shadow, but in the light of day looks mega derpy. Both of those are bad, but there are two personalized belts that stand head and shit above the rest. The first is Jay Briscoe's Ring of Honor Championship. A lot going on with this one. The camo strap, like he's been a patient boy and saved up all his cod points, the bearded skull design, but crap cherry on the problematic Sunday are the little confederate flags. I'm sure you're just a big fan of tradition, Jay Briscoe. A real good old belt, this. The second terrible personalized title, however, that deserves an entry of its very own. Number three, Jeff Hardy is history's greatest monster. Jeff Hardy was one of my favorite wrestlers when I first started watching. He's beloved. He's a legend. Please never let him design anything ever again. He made wins. Willow, aka what would happen if the penguin and Sting had a baby and that baby was also a My Chemical Romance tree. He made face makeup that looks like a member of Sesame Street having a severe allergic reaction. But worst of all, he made the immortal belt. It's based on one of his paintings and oh my sweet Jesus. Purple strap, dangerous points, and oh no that face. Like if Dr. Manhattan found himself at Burning Man. The design even comes with earplugs. Fun fact, there have been multiple Jeff Hardy personalized belts. Here's another one. 
The Deep Terror. Number two, what women want. Bloody hell, the women of WWE have had to carry around some bullshit in their time, haven't they? The women's championship that Fabulous Moolah carried around had a picture of a headshot on it like a Princess Diana commemorative plate. The belt that Alundra Blaze held pretty much by herself was all right until she fucking binned it. Then came the years of the bit of burnt sausage skin. Can't believe we become nostalgic for that stretch turd. Never forget the awful lay cool belt where they each carried a shattered half of the women's championship. The modern belts that SmackDown and Raw have are much better, but again, like the WWE, WWE Championship, they're just a gaudy corporate logo. The women's tag championships are toys, and now we have to talk about the butterfly belt, the Divas Championship, created in 2008 and ran all the way until 2016, and it was the utter worst. But you don't need to hear my male ass opinion on that. Why don't we ask Alex, YouTuber over at Queen of the Ring and former Quizzlemania champion, what she thinks. Yes, many people who identify as a woman in wrestling, including myself, will agree that this is the worst title design in women's wrestling history. It is very possible to make a women's title and not make it look like an ugly ass piece of Barbie doll accessory from the Dollar Tree. For example, the first NXT women's title, a standard championship title with a little touch of pink to let you know this is feminine as fuck, but it's also equally as important as the men's title. Right, Adam? And number one, look at this rinky dink piece of shit. The 24 7 Championship. F King hell, it looks like the world's bleakest sobriety chip. It looks like the kind of plate millionaires eat off when they're pretending to eat at a diner for class conscious kink play. It looks like the physical manifestation of that'll do. It looks like something slick Rick would wear around his neck. It looks like Donald Trump's frisbee. It looks like your least favorite child's least favorite child. It looks like something that Rob Gronkowski would carry around. It looks like God died. Yeah, like, okay, it's a joke title and it's done great things for our truth, but shouldn't it also look like something that someone would, I don't know, want to win? Shouldn't it look like something other than a drawing on a napkin? Is this how far it's come that the number one and wealthiest wrestling company in the world would put this out there and we just accept it? Who did this? Why did this? Let's just look. Let's just look at the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. There. There. It's all. It's all better now. And that's our list. What do you think is the ugliest championship belt in wrestling history? Let us know in the comments if we've missed it out. And make sure you subscribe to WrestleTalk for more lists and news videos. Check out our sister channel, Parts Fun Known. And always remember to jam that jam.